All right, let's switch over to something, a happier subject. <laughs> On second lot, let's not do that. Uh, if you live in here in Arizona, anybody live here in Arizona other than the San Francisco guy? Uh, here's a new uh, Supreme Court of Arizona came out with a uh, uh, decision that affects uh, churches. What happened was the Mormons had a guy come in for, for a counseling and prayer, and he was molesting a kid in the congregation. Okay? And the Mormons told the kid's mother that um, this guy's molesting your son, call the CPS, call it in. And she says, I don't want to do that. That's going to cause this problem and that problem and this one. The Mormon church did nothing. The kid's uh, dad found out about it, sued the church, sued the church because they didn't report it. He won the church, appealed it, he won again, it went to the Arizona Supreme Court, the church won. And here's the new law in the state of Arizona. California probably already has it. They usually have everything before any of us get it. Okay. <clears throat> if someone comes to a minister at a church and says, or a confessional booth, and says, uh, listen, I'm molesting a bunch of kids, or I'm robbing banks, or I'm doing whatever. The church is not legally required to report it if they got the information in a private counseling session or in a confessional booth. However, if they're getting the information in passing or in casual conversation, hey, I'm doing a couple kids and I'm robbing a couple circle Ks, that's a different story. It was not given in a pastoral, confessional, private setting. It was blobbed out in the domain of normal human interaction. And that is must be reported. They can be sued over that. I'm just reporting the news. By the way, that prayer was uh, chat GPT. That's the, is that the number one? Uh, AI one right now? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. They nicknamed or nicknamed him Chatty. The, the program wrote the prayer, Chatty wrote the prayer on his own based on his reading and watching Christian videos. Griffin watches videos? and memorizes everything. So if this chatty reads a book, the whole book is memorized. Wow. All right. Some good things are happening, even though it doesn't appear to be that. California uh, is losing. Okay. The Supreme Court uh, said it is illegal and a violation of their constitutional rights to shut a church down. Los Angeles County had to pay the church, Grace Community Church, almost a half a million dollars for shutting them down. There was a big fight. This preacher named John MacArthur 
a Baptist guy. Mm -hmm. This guy's tough as nails. You know, he's like a pit bull. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you're not shutting me down. Mm -hmm. They shut him down, and he took it all the way up and won. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Uh, Chula Vista, California, South Bay United Pentecostal Church won their lawsuit. And they had to be compensated for being forced to shut down. A Catholic priest in Bakersfield, Father Trevor Burfitt, won. They shut his church down. They had to pay him. So the trend is uh, religious freedom, from a constitutional standpoint, appears to be Temporarily now hanging on until Chatty gets to it. I guess it'll be over then. Some churches in California ended up. Um, who did? Who did that? Some of the churches in California. The churches. Reg <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're outsmarting Chatty. <laughs> now, <clears throat> this is our main teaching, as you know. I'm tired of teaching it. Let me take a breath here. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're going to get in the ministry, if you don't understand this chart, you're going to have a lot of problems with people because you won't understand them. So, these are the five parts of man. Those are your five parts. And your inner man is made up of these four parts. And they all work uh, independently and collectively all at the same time. It's the miracle of human creation. Humans are God's highest creation. And the human mind is God's number one created thing in the natural world. Nothing is greater than the human mind. Your mind is the seed of your intellect, intellect and your free will. Your free will and your intelligence are in your mind. Your conscience is the seed of your morality. morality. Yeah. Your soul is the seat of your emotions, emotions your feelings. Okay? And your spirit man is the seat of your spirituality. spirituality. When someone becomes a born-again Christian, the only thing born again is this. The rest of the person is still jacked up. A born-again Christian is sinless in the eyes of God, because your spirit man is perfect and is the place the Holy Spirit lives. He moves in here. All your gifts and all your fruit and your anointing, everything comes out of spirit man. If you're a Buddhist or a Zoroasterist or an Islam Imam or what have you, all of your spiritual power witch doctor, voodoo, whatever it is, all comes out of here, infected with demons. The demons get in here and you develop spiritual power. <coughs> Witchcraft, sorcery, new age, whatever it is, whatever you're into, coming out of here, managed by your mind. A Christian, the opposite. Holy Spirit coming out of here, managed by your mind. So, if you're having somebody sitting in your office and they're crying their eyes out, their soul is manifesting. Okay? And so that would be what we call a wound, right? There's a wound from being molested when you were four. Here's a wound for getting beat up by your dad. Here's one with your first husband who dragged you down the hall by your hair. These wounds, here's your mother nagging the living hell out of you here for 15 years. This mother wound is in there, right? And so these wounds manifest in different types of negativity, such as what? Depression, sorrow, anger, vengeance, jealousy. These wounds have manifestation. So it's easy to tell if you or someone else has a wound 
because there are symptoms in the same way you having prostate cancer has symptoms. Pain, swelling, difficulty, urinating, the doctor goes down the list. Are these your symptoms? But, 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 but. Spiritually, it's exactly the same thing. You go down the list, is this your symptoms? Bup, 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 bup. And so you as a minister are going to help the person by helping them identify the wound and help them get rid of it. That simple. And it's that hard. But the person who comes to you for help wants to know what's wrong with them. That's part of human nature. They want to know what a diagnosis is. What's wrong with me? Medical, spiritual, doesn't matter. They want to know. And if they don't know, it makes everything worse. The demons get into their brain and they tell them, they, they help you discern that. They say, well, this is not related to your mom. That's related to something else. And then they'll give you solutions to help you. You need therapy. Uh, you need new friends. You need a different job. You need to start drinking this. You need to start smoking that. They'll give you an antidote, but it's always wrong. So your job is to overcome these lies and these solutions the devil gave them and give them truth. Because you will know the truth and the... It sets you free. Lies cannot set people free. So if I'm a therapist and I tell the person, oh, those are terrible... Uh, that's a lot of pain there. Let's bury that. How are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to send you my friend who's a hypnotist. <laughs> okay, what? No, we're not burying anything. We're bringing it to the surface, and then the Holy Spirit is removing it. Then once it's removed, it's as if it never happened. Are all your wounds gone? You just do an audit of yourself. Is something causing me unwanted pain? When I talk to my dad, do I feel... Uh, uh. Okay, that's a dad wound because you had a symptom of a wound. And you have discernment now and are able to audit yourself to find out what your own wounds are and you can audit others by simply asking them a few simple questions. Did your dad hurt you real bad? What did he do to you? Have you talked to him recently? How did you feel when you talked to him? Simple common sense questions will reveal whether or not a person has a soul wound. If they have a soul wound, they're not going to get healed. It'll block everything. It's a distraction. So the demons say, hey, you need therapy, you need medication, and you need a vacation. It'll all clear up. Well, you do all those things and you still got these symptoms. Well, they lied to you. They always give you a solution. The demons cause problems and then they always provide a solution to fix them. They're trying to help you. They're helping you. Why don't you get rid of these friends? Because they suck. And we'll bring you some more friends who are super sucks. Okay. The problem is not your friends. The problem is you. Brother Mike... This is as bad as the seminar last night. Okay. You got a problem. What is that? There's a soul wound there from you taking a beating when you were five. Your stepdad beat the stuffing out of you. Remember that? Well, that left a wound there. Wounds have symptoms. Depression, 
insecurity, shyness, avoiding conflict. I don't like this. Ooh, I don't want to get in a fight. Ooh, I want to keep the peace. How can I keep peace? Ooh. Shyness is from demons. When you got the Holy Ghost, you the man. You don't, you're not taking orders anymore from the devil. You're giving them. Come on, let's go. Amen. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Okay, the only person you're hurting is yourself. Because you're gutless. That's not coming out of here. This is all-knowing, all-powerful. So you simply talk with somebody. You know, it's easy to do. I do it every Friday at the altar. So do you. Last night, I'm interviewing a pastor and his associate at the end of the service. It's all on tape. This guy I'm interviewing uh, is an old friend of mine. I met him in jail. I... <laughs> held a service at the Estrella one day, the men's service. And it was packed. There was over 70 men there. And uh, at the altar call, uh, the Holy Ghost leaped. Praise God. Yeah. leaped on these men. Many of them were crying. Many of them fell over. This one fell on top of that one. This one fell on top of that one. This one collapsed over here, crying. <laughs> Begging for mercy. He was one of them. This was in uh, 2004. The anointing was so nuts that I took his hand and started putting his hand on the other man. <laughs> Everybody crying. A whole bunch of people standing around petrified. Didn't know what was going on. Well, he gets out seven years ago or eight. He starts a church in Tucson. And uh, I go down there, and we had a service there. I um, can't remember who went down there that day. Do you remember? The team? Yeah. yeah. How many went down? I think there were four. Karina, Joe, four. Lori, and... Um, four. Yeah, we went down to his church, four or five of us. And blew the place out. It was the first time I'd ever seen a mentally retarded woman uh, getting demons blown out of her. I'd never seen that before. It was it was remarkable. And he he didn't know what to make of it. And the guy is loaded with rejection spirits and fears and so on. He starts his church seven years ago. And uh, has got nothing but trouble uh, with the people. You know, uh, it's kind of like what I had last night on steroids. Uh, a bunch of people, they quit, they backstab him, they don't cooperate. They, and, you know, and every time it happens, you know, one of these manifests. You know, he never, he never finishes deliverance. And he's suffering 
emotionally. All these people stabbing him in the back, leaving him. Uh, I'll help you with that. They don't do it. I'll be there. They don't show up. The usual church stuff. A normal church, basically what it is. But he's not, he's not qualified to be a pastor of a church with people there who are underprivileged, uh, people live on the street, homeless, ho really demonized people. He, he doesn't have the skills for it. And so he takes a lot of pain in the system. You know? And I spent at the end of the service about 20 minutes going over a bunch of stuff about his church. It's on the tape if you want to hear it. It was a very odd conversation. I got him scheduled to come up next week to get delivered. But, you know, all these years, he's an intelligent person. He used to be a great athlete. He used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, he was a defensive end. And uh, now he's the opposite, you know, kind of beaten down kind of an introvert, shy. You would think somebody who played pro football or like Rick who played for ASU would be more like Rick, you know. Kind of like somebody that would stomp on you. Tough guy. Strong. You know, he's not. He's not. And again, his soul is so damaged that it's just, ugh, he's sunk. Yeah. I mean, you've got to be a tough person to play pro football, even if you're a punter. That is not an easy life. You've got to be resilient. You've got to be a fighter, right? He's not. And again, it's all because of these wounds that never got, got cured. They'll just burn you out and wear you, wear you down. I was quite surprised that uh, the devil hadn't sent him a wife. I was shocked. He's still not married. <laughs> <laughs> Had he been married, we would have seen this acceleration. And uh, we would have probably eventually seen that. Boom. <laughs> Shooting ahead. So, uh, God wants to heal this guy and get that church going. And so I'm going to do everything I can to help him. Amen. So we can have a, a place to go down there. So we can start reaching out to Tucson. We were down there just recently and uh, there were some people down there who <laughs> did not like me very much. And tried to ruin the service and kept interrupting everything. <laughs> But it didn't matter. I said, well, uh, I caught a huge break. Some old man on my right in Tucson at the service was sitting over there, and he started talking about his daughter who had abandoned him. And he burst into tears. And I thought, that's it. As soon as I saw the Holy Ghost jump on that guy, I said, I'm bagging this teaching, and I'm not taking any more of these interruptions. I'll just go there. So I ran over there. Praise God. To start on that guy, you know. Amen. But he didn't know. I thought he thought I was coming over there and helping. I had been running for my life. <laughs> yeah. So why would um, the soul wounds have been accelerated if, the, if he was married? Well, because he would have picked up more. The, the, the more pain and suffering and heartache you go through, the more wounds you collect. You become a wound collector. Okay. And the sicker you get, your emotional in, in, illness accelerates the more wounds you pick up. And, and can I say something too? Not, not when you've got... You we don't allow anyone to talk, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, hon. <laughs> you did a confirmation with his soul, and when we're driving here, I was telling her, because I said I want to be a leader of youth leadership, and I'm trying to ask God to uproot it every darkness out of me, every demon that is not because how can I reach out to these kids if I have something going on inside of me? So yeah, you know, that has to be taken care of. Do you have soul wounds? 
I believe it's coming out the Holy Spirit is taking it out because I'm acknowledging it. So wounds over what? Um, I had a lot of anger in me towards my family attacking me with things. What did they do to you? I'm sorry. What did they do to you? What did, they will they will call me and they will make a false accusation and then okay. they will face it. Great. Now did you hear that? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wish she'd have been there last night. <laughs> Could have avoided that <laughs> seminar. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, she was there last night. Now she's redeemed herself. So you see that? False accusations. Okay, nobody likes to be accused of something they didn't do, right? So if you're in prison, obviously everybody claims they're accused of something they didn't do. But if it's real, it, you know, stags a dagger in there. Particularly if it's coming from a source you respect or like or trust or love. And that's the ones the devil uses the most. Okay? Normally you don't get a soul wound when Joe Biden says something on TV. Because it's not personal. You don't know Joe Biden. And if you did, you, you wouldn't understand him either. So, if it's your mother or your sister, now that's a horse of a different color. That really hurts. Our spouse. A child, somebody that you're emotionally connected to, stabbed you. Ooh, that really hurts. Okay? And so, her chances of being in the youth are poor. Because the demons will watch these wounds and they'll, they'll pick out the kids to trigger them. So her youth ministry is going to be a monstrous headache. Because every time you have a wound, the devil knows it's there. They see everything in the spirit world, so they trigger the wounds. It's supernatural. They'll actually bring people to you that you can't even believe. Where, where'd you come from? Why did you just say that? I, didn't, well, I wasn't talking about that topic. Well, he said it because the spirit world is trying to get this thing to... That's the same reason why a lot of people go back to drugs and alcohol, because they yeah, have their soul. Exactly. Wounds. Number one relapse issue is tr soul wound triggers. Mm -hmm. I teach at the Dream Center over here on Tuesdays. And I've taught at five or six other rehab centers around town over the years. And uh, while you're in rehab, that's your best life because you're in a cocoon and a sheltered environment. That's right. Hell comes to breakfast when you get discharged. Then an avalanche of satanic monstrosity hits you. You got to get a job. A job. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you got to go back to your wife and your kids. Holy shoot. <laughs> the demons are waiting for you to get out of rehab. They're standing on the property, whispering, come see Papa. <laughs> You're going to be drinking early today. Sure enough, an old friend, somebody calls, somebody shows up. It's miraculous. And, oh, no. Can I go back to the rehab center? Mm -hmm. I had three hots and a cot. Yeah. You follow me? They're waiting for you to get out of rehab. It's a setup. I have something happen like that. What's that? I have something similar to that. You? I was kidding. <laughs> so I was getting, I went to a seminar to do deliverance. And I, they found that I had a soul tie with my mom, but it was really strong and just... It really affected my life for a long time. And when they were able to break that, I went home the next day and I uh, go to work. And then she calls me. Now we weren't mm -hmm. talking for a long time. She called me. She they said, told her to call him. They told her to call you. Yeah. And she was like, let me come over. Oh, come over. Yeah, to trigger you and to send you into a dive. Yes. It's a spiritual war. This is not a physical war. Mm -hmm. Wow. That happens all the time. Yeah. Routine. She called me during COVID too when it was on lockdown. And then she said something just so crazy. I just went down to a 
Nervous breakdown. She never said it. They told her to say it. It's a setup. And because she's ignorant about how the spirit world operates, she got caught. I got caught up. Yep. That's routine, what she just said. That was perfect. Thank you. I had a question like, if, uh, to avoid accumulating more soul wounds, is it cowardly to just leave certain situations? It's like a bad, or do you just have to work through that? Well, yeah, it's good, but it's bad if you leave them there. Okay, so you got a bunch of soul wounds. You say, I don't want to get any more soul wounds. You're out, you're out, and you're out. Okay, that's good. You got rid of these three losers, but then you didn't finish your inner healing. Mm -hmm. So that means your future sucks. Had you let them in, it would have super sucked. So people who are, um, who have like the comment of, oh, I was doing fine. Basically, they remove themselves from other people who are like that or trigger them. And so they thought they were doing fine. But then if someone comes along and triggers that same wound, then they'll manifest, correct? Yes. And then someone like that will continue to come on, come along until they get rid of that wound. Is that correct? Of course. Okay. Now, it's the battered wife syndrome is what she just said. So <clears throat> if you're married and he's hitting you, that hurts. So over a period of time, you convince her to leave. She leaves. How are you feeling? I'm feeling so much better. My life is better, I'm happier, I'm this and that. What happened? They got her, see? If you're beating on someone and you stop and you, now you're tapping them, you feel a lot better, but you're not healed. So the demons outsmart everybody. They just simply go down and stop attacking them temporarily, giving them an illusion they're healed. And then later on in another trigger situation, click, 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 they relaunch. Yeah, if I was a Jew and I made it through the Holocaust, I currently feel a thousand times better than I did when I was at Auschwitz. Is that person healed? No. Okay. The demons know that. It's a matter of degrees. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll stop torturing them to hear or we'll go dormant and they, they think they're healed. Perfect. So how do they know when they really heal? Yeah. The symptoms will manifest again. They'll relaunch an attack later. She'll find another guy, the same guy that beat her up. She'll find another guy, exactly. Yeah. Um, so during that dormant season or the season of where they reduced as far as how they're manifesting, um, is it showing in things such as like depression or is that from? Every wound has a symptom. You know, this one could be anger, that one could be depression, whatever it is. Loneliness, okay. hatred. Yeah, wounds always have symptoms. And it's a wound that triggers these guys to relapse. And it's usually after they're rehabbed or after they go through detox, right? So if somebody calls me, us and, I, and they say, can, can I bring my son over? What's the story? Uh, he's on crack. When's the last time he used? Uh, yesterday. Can he come over and get delivered? No. I said, call um, Good Sam, call JC, call somebody and go get him in detox. Okay, there's no point in you casting a bunch of demons out of a guy that used crack yesterday without dealing with these soul wounds and then the addiction to the body. It's not just all spiritual. The body becomes addicted to whatever you're, you've gotten it used to and it craves it. And they go through detox to try to that down. 
So then that would be the same for people who have like food addictions or something like that too, right? All addictions are the same. Mm -hmm. The method of the addiction is different. Okay. So this one might be pizza, this might be heroin. Mm -hmm. But the body wants it and craves it. And the demons push the body to accelerate. I know what I've noticed is that um, people like often don't have enough resources to protect themselves to heal the wounds. So I don't know. It's just like that's just what it seems like to me. But like, well, sometimes they get like they become more homeless, and then when they put themselves in dangerous situations, then they like then they get more soul wounds, and then it just seems like it just like snowballs. Well, uh, you know? none of them have any support system. Okay. To get, that's why you're here. That's why I'm explaining this. Mm -hmm. You are their support system because you, not the therapist, knows what's actually wrong with them. Yeah, that's good. And yes, they're going to get worse. That's what the devil does. Everything gets worse, that's right. not better. They don't back off of nothing. They'll take a break. They'll lull you into another area. They will relaunch later. Your job is to identify and remove these wounds in that person. And if you don't do that, they're going to get worse. Guaranteed. In your book on uh, dealing with mental illness, yep. there's a small section about brain fog. So if someone's got brain fog, how do you bring up those memories to recall the disorder? Well, now brain fog, that's demons in your brain. Okay. And they're taking your memories, they're giving you dreams, they put all kinds of crap in your head. Deliverance can clear up brain fog. That's not a soul wound from a beating from your dad. That's a spirit in your brain blocking your memory, your concentrational deficits, memory deficits, processing blanks. And it could also be relate, related to chemicals that you're taking. <laughs> okay, that's not going to help your brain fog run in two or three lines. Not going to work. Temporarily, you'll feel like you don't have any brain fog, but it's masking it. So that's a deliverance issue. Mind or the brain fog, is it from the soul wounds? What's it from? Like, what's no, uh, well, it could be related to the soul wounds, but you could have gotten involved in something else and picked up mind control spirits, masonry, uh, Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, witchcraft, sorcery, voodoo, something spiritual could have happened, boop, and they jumped in your head. So, like, is Kundalini churches too? Kundalini is a demon in your brain impersonating the Holy Ghost from here. They're not coming out of here, they're in your brain. So they give you a godly vision or a trip to heaven. <gasps> See, you go to heaven and you have lunch with Jesus. You get a divine pizza. <sighs> okay, that's all familiar spirit crap. None of that's real. It's coming out of your brain. They're hiding in your brain. I got a word for you. Them. A lot of the prophetic stuff is, is that right? Most of the prophetic right. stuff is that. Yeah, all of them. Cookville. YouTube. So through education like we're getting today, as an individual, we could recognize the relaunch and uh, self-deliver ourselves? Yeah, because there's going to be, they're going to relaunch attacking something here. Addictive body cravings, negative emotions, crazy, uncontrolled, obsessive, compulsive thoughts. And if you learn how to recognize these things, some people call it discernment. Call it whatever you want. You're, you're picking up on it. It's all that matters. You can catch it and stop it. Right? Like Paul said, you take that thought captive. That's right. 
you kill it. <laughs> Mafia style. Back of the head, boom. Right? You pick up the lie, you caught the lie. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if you've got brain demons and you've been listening to demons for years, they switch over and they start telling you good things. Okay? Before it was fear thoughts. Nobody likes you, everybody hates you, you're going to get hit by a car, you're going to go broke, your sister's going to die in a fiery car. Later on, years later, they switch over to Jesus and they start giving you godly things to do. Okay? <clears throat> so they start training you. They train you like that. Pray for your, your sister. She's applying for a job today. Pray for her. Well, this person thinks that's God talking to him because that's a pretty good thought to pray for your sister and she's going for a job interview. Then they'll give you another one. Your mother's back's hurting. Don't forget to pray about your mother's back. Okay, dear Jesus, pray for mom's back. And they train you like a pet seal to receive their thoughts. And then as soon as you're used to receiving these good things, whoop, they switch over to something weird. You see a vision. You, see, you hear a voice. Is that God talking to me? I just heard John 3.16. That must be God, right? Oh. It's not. Why are they doing that? Because they're getting you used to listening to their voice, and then later on they switch it to something dark. And since they're already your friend, you believe it. That's not a foreign thought. It's not a foreign feeling. It feels like God. Wow. My goodness. So, how do you diagnose that? If this person has a long history of brain spirits, plano spirits, and they had a history back here for several years of negativity, and then they got some deliverance, and then their mind started to go positive, and then they start seeing stuff and hearing stuff, you know right there that person's doomed. Because when I tell them, listen, all of this is crap. They look at me like I'm a certified psycho. Well, well you got to be kidding. Crap. That was a Bible verse. <laughs> a Bible verse is crap. You're, this is apostasy. No. Listen carefully. Jesus ran into a spirit here. Mark 1. Mark 5. Mark 9. Right? This one pipes up and he goes, you're the Son of God. You're the Holy One of God. You're the Messiah. This demon is trying to run a line on Jesus by telling him things that are true. What they're saying was correct. And his response was, Come out of there. So what was his response? So huh? Shut up. It's not truth you want, it's the source of it. Did you hear me? Jesus said, Father, sanctify them with thy truth, for thy word is truth, and they will know the truth. And the truth will set them free. If you get truth from demons, the president, your mother, someone you love, someone who is, you're running a risk of being deceived. Because truth doesn't matter. 
is the source of it. Demons use truth for manipulation purposes. They, they wanted Jesus to say, oh, look, even the demons are acknowledging truth. Good boy, you guys are doing a good job. Then the other people around them would have heard him say that. Then they would start listening to yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, no, I don't want to hear a word out of you on any subject. I don't care if you told everybody I was Santa Claus or you told them I was the son of God. It doesn't matter. Shut up. The source of truth is the key, not what they're saying. Okay, and we lost one on that one. That's okay. Normally it's seven or eight. It's usually seven or eight. But I lost one. I'm doing good. It's not like last night. Hang on. It's not last night. I apologize for last night. I screwed that up. No. You know them by their fruit. That's true. He was talking about ministers in that context. This, this fruit was coming out of demons, which he wasn't talking about. What she's talking about. This is truth from devils. And they will be happy to quote you a Bible verse. They know the whole Bible, yeah. backwards and forth, much better than you'll ever know it. No question. But it's used to manipulate. And if you've ever watched a TV preacher, they use Bible verses to manipulate the masses That's right. to get something out of them. See, that's what demons do. Jesus wouldn't have put up with that. I don't want to hear a word from you. Period. That's true. But what are we talking about? I'm talking about God and Jehovah. I'm telling people true things. Talk to the hand. If you want truth, you pick up your... <laughs> That's where you get it. Not some voice talking. You want me to pray for a pastor in Uganda? Praise God, I better pray for him. Well, that was a setup there because as soon as you heard that voice and it felt comfortable to you, so you start praying for Uganda pastors, now they got you. So they'll run another line on you. Pray for your aunt. The thought never comes in, get me out of your head. <laughs> that you're not going to hear that. Yeah. Paul said you're the slave of the master you serve. If you listen to them and you do what they tell you, you are their slave. And as a Christian, you are to rebel against the devil. He's to have no part of your life whatsoever. Now, will you ever be perfect? No, it's not going to happen. That's okay. Grace covers the rest of that. Okay? As long as God looks at you and you've got a sincere heart and you're trying and you're pushing forward, you're making mistakes, you're failing, that's, no, that's fine. That's a learning experience. You just go forward. You're going to win. Period. You cannot lose. Amen. You will keep failing, which is good. Training. You saw me last night. Like an idiot, I'm standing there. I'll take a few questions. Oh, jeez. Boom. Boom. Stupid. How did I get sucked into that? Well, what happened was the demon put it. Why don't you take some questions, you moron? I didn't catch the thought. Some people were asking me questions. I didn't even understand the question. Some of them were... I didn't understand the words in the question. I was gone. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is it kind of like the religious spirit? How the demons will say, hey, Well, the religious spirit comes from these demons that were barking at Jesus. Yeah, but the religious spirits are the one that gets in your head and they are almost impossible to get out. Because what I just told you about saying good things, godly things, Christian things, Bible things, accelerates like that. 
And if I tell them, hey, that, those are demons telling you that, at least half of them don't believe me. I lose at least half of them. Yeah. So, so last night, how would you have known the difference between... I didn't. I didn't catch it. Question. But how, how could you? I knew better. Okay. I'd done it before. <laughs> and I just, it's, I spaced it. They got me. <laughs> and I had a series of questions that were so dumb, I couldn't. And I didn't know how to stop it. <laughs> yeah. The key thing is, I mean, this is so when you come to churches, how do you avoid picking up those religious demons? Because so many churches kind of operate. Well, you can't avoid it because unless you don't know what they're doing, you can't stop it. And that's the purpose of. I got 400 teachings on YouTube. The purpose of all of them was you see them, what they're doing. I'm trying to expose them. I'm trying to pull up their skirt. I'm trying to pull the curtain back. This is what they're doing. I'm doing it right now. I'm telling you, they're telling you Bible verses. Yeah. Yeah. And can I say something? It's one thing I no. missed with you yesterday. You didn't take offense at it at all. And... That, that was really beautiful. No, I'm past taking offenses. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm about to take one. <laughs> no, uh, uh, she, I'm playing with her because she, you know what happened last night. She was funny. Uh, but again, it was all my fault. I should never have done that. I, wow. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, any questions on this super teaching? Any questions about the structure of humans. If you do not understand this, you will never understand people. They will always confuse you, and you will not be able to fix them. Right? So first. So, for, so what would be an example of a dark thought that would come about um, after uh, all those religious thoughts that, uh, you, that they won't be able to? Uh, you're being persecuted. Oh. Uh, they don't like you. They're not listening to truth. Oh. Well, you better get out of this church. All kinds of weird stuff start coming in. A lot of people start cults, they have something like that. Oh, no, they have that on steroids. I'm not talking about cults now. This is a normal stuff that, ever, that can hit anybody. Cults is a different level. I don't have time going to cult. That's too much. This is just regular people, regular folks, what I'm talking about right now. This is regular people, all people. Everybody is like that. Uh, so first, first Timothy four. Some people are going to have a have a what? Their conscience seared. Okay, so that's a person who has kept sinning over something multiple times over the years. Since 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 no conviction. So now they're doing it, and they don't feel it's wrong or sense it's wrong. That's because their conscience is seared. They're really hard to get delivered. Very difficult. Because when you share truth with them, this is what you're doing. It doesn't register. It doesn't seem wrong. Can you repeat that again? The last one. Why, what's wrong? Can you repeat that? If a person has a seared conscience, that's a Greek word, kateriazo, it doesn't. It means it's cauterized. It doesn't work anymore. Your conscience is like an internal filter that filters out your world. And it warns you of dangerous input. You know, sometimes you'll actually get a feeling about somebody you just met and you go, Ugh, something's not right here. I don't even know this person and that's uncomfortable. Well, your conscience is kind of telling you, hey, there's danger there. Okay. Or when you first sin at something, you kind of feel, oh, that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. But as you repetitively keep repeating that sin, whoop, it doesn't hurt anymore. It, there's, no, there's no conviction anymore. And those people are very hard to get delivered. Because conviction is the best thing that will ever happen to you in your life. Condemnation is the worst. The devil condemns. The Holy Spirit convicts. 
Convictions from love, condemnations from hell. So if you're sinning and failing and you feel condemned and you're ashamed to go pray and ask for forgiveness, that's condemnation. Condemnation. Conviction's wonderful. And I got it last night. Unfortunately, it was on the way home. <laughs> Stupid. Why did I open it up? The questions. That's for this service, not that service. This is the question service. This goes great. That's inappropriate. And of course, it's all Kelly's fault. She didn't yell or anything. You know, so, so see, there I go. I, my conscience is seared, and so I'm comfortable blaming others for my problems. See that? Yeah, that those are people who blame everybody else for their problems. I'm not an alcoholic. They drove me to drink. That's a seared conscience. Not taking responsibility for your asinine behavior. Wait a second. You said a, a seared conscience is it's, other people? Yeah. Okay. That's wrong to blame other people for your problems. You don't have a people problem. You've got a you problem. You were the problem. It's easy to spot. You just sit and listen to the person. They tell you about their lives. <clears throat> this isn't Albert Einstein stuff. This is like common sense. That's right. Well, I didn't do that. They forced me to do it. They made me do it. They pressured me into it. They did that. Well, as soon as you start hearing they, 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 red flag going here. These are soul wounds barking at you. Your conscience is seared. Won't take responsibility for yourself. And it's everybody else's problem. And screw you. You just diagnose them. Help them. So I have a customer who's Mormon LDS, and um, this guy, I mean, some of the wackiest stuff comes out of his mouth, and I just cringe in terror. And uh, I actually got him down here on a Thursday night. Uh, Rick was looking at him. And he, he told me, he said, that guy is just trying to get a reaction out of me. And uh, he's very dramatic. Uh, is what he's, but this guy is, uh, like you would say, he's chock full of demons. Well, those are religious demons. Mormon's demons are very powerful. Okay? And I would st steer clear of them if I was you. Because they dug in like Alabama ticks. They won't budge. I'm under that impression. You can't sit down with them and Say, now, wait a minute. Did Moroni really show up in that cave? Really? Are you really supposed to have five wives? You can't even take care of one wife. You ever had, met somebody more than one wife? They are heavy drinkers. Stop. Yeah. So what makes... Um, Someone who has such heavy religious demons um, want to get out and, and be delivered versus the masses don't. Well, f people that have familiar spirits and religious demons, they want to be delivered from things such as they've got something wrong with their body, they're sick, they, they have depression, they got insomnia, something like that. But then when you tell them, hey, the real problem is this one. Then they go, they'll bolt on you. That's exactly what's yeah. happening. They'll bolt. As soon as you confront them with a little truth, that religious demon, poof, he'll manifest like a <clears throat> scary. Great, great question. Yeah. Yeah, they're all sick, and they want their sicknesses and little things fixed. But, but when you tell them, look, you know, if we start here, we're going to end up in a bad place. The root of it is this fake Holy Spirit hanging around your head. He's running the show. The other ones are just support staff. They're super smart. On conviction, where, where, does, that, where does that come in? Conviction, conviction is it comes from your conscience. The Holy Spirit in here touches your conscience. That in something's the, wrong. That you're something's wrong. With, with right. the soul. Right. 
with everything, whatever. Everything. You may be involved in a behavior, you may be saying something, whatever it is, he'll convict you saying, hey, that's going to hurt you, that's going to hurt somebody else, we need to fix that. The devil will come in and say, you call yourself a Christian, you said that? Yeah, you suck. <laughs> he'll condemn you for what you did. The Holy Spirit will try to get you to see what you did so we can remove it and move on to your destiny. He's always got that one-track mind. He wants you into your destiny. And he never backs off of it. He's going to help you come hell or high water if you cooperate. If you don't cooperate, hey, we're dead in the water. Yeah, you can pick up religious demon from church. Where do they normally hang out? Well, let me think about it. A palm reader would have a few down the street. A psychic hotline would have them, right? But most of them are going to be at church. And that's why Paul told Timothy, hey, don't put your hands on, don't put, people are putting your hands on you. Do you know that person? Whoa, stop doing that. Because you can pick up a transfer from some kook you don't know anything about. Well, they said he's a prophet. Oh, as soon as they said he was a prophet, that's a red flag right there. And do not let that prophet put their hands on you. Run for the dough. They can pray for you, but they don't need to touch you. Do they? No. You can pray for somebody without touching them. Yeah, don't let anybody touch you. You don't know who that is. Amen. You can pick up a transfer and it's hell on wheels getting them out. Because you voluntarily took it. See, your free will let it in. We had a lady that was here in our ministry about two years ago or something like that. <clears throat> I'm not good with time. Not good with questions either. Um, <laughs> She goes to a service with her husband. The, hu the husband is, you know, kind of a dead Christian. And uh, not a spiritual person at all. Very intelligent man. There's a prophet at this service holding a uh, blessing line or something, some kind of altar call. And... Uh, he prays for this one over here. They start, they start gyrating. He prays for that. And that one goes down and starts to have a seizure. And gets down to the end here and then uh, points at her. And the husband bolts up the hall into the lobby. <laughs> she goes down. Hits the ground. Picks up a rack of demons comes back and is all kinds of sick. Rick takes her over here and blows God only knows what out of her for an hour. And I said to her, what demon in your head told you to go down to that altar? That's the one we got to get out. Because he was hiding in her brain. Her anointing was great, wonderful anointing. All kinds of people delivered, doing a great job. He was hiding. Demons are opportunists. They look for an opportunity. If they don't, they'll go dormant on you. I'm not in here, shush. But at that moment, point at her. Point at that woman back there. Come down. She, come, she got out of her seat. And he bolts. Did he touch her? Yeah. He touched her, boom, hit the deck, seizure, everything. Oh, people are getting blessed, hallelujah. <clears throat> About seven years ago, me and Rick go up to a church in North Phoenix off of uh, North 7th Street, I believe it was, near Beardsley. It was a church inside a uh, big commercial development and uh, a famous prophetic minister was going to be there. So 
I said, yeah, I'd like to see this guy. I heard about him, this and that. So we go to the service and I'm sitting in the back and the service starts. He gives a message of some kind. Seems like a real nice guy, very intelligent person. You know, my age or a little younger. Uh, time for altar call. I, I get up and go to the back of the service when it's altar call time. So I'm going to watch everything that happens. I'm just scoping. There was about 200 people there or something like that. Pretty, pretty good group. They go down, they line up in the front. He goes down the line. Another gal chip chips in with him and follows him. Then another gal chipped in. She will she followed him. All the way down the line. <clears throat> Boom, crash, rolling around, seizure. Uh, people over here are doing the hose. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, have you ever seen the hose? They're they're jerking like that. Hose. My mouth's hanging open and I'm pinned against the wall. The door's there and I can get out fast if I need to. I can get out. What really killed me was a woman was there who was a beautiful woman of God one of the most dedicated Christians I've ever known. She, she and I used to attend the same church, Somebody God Church years ago. She was down in the front, snorting like a pig. Everybody Praise God for this glorious intervention of the Spirit. I said, it's an intervention of the Spirit or I'm edging to the door. <laughs> it's not the Spirit you think it is. This is not the Spirit you think it is. And, and I mean, this whole place blew up. I mean, there was real power there. I saw the power. This wasn't a joke. These, uh, is it holy laughter from your Spirit? Of course. And um, this was one end to the other. This, this wasn't a joke. Two weeks later, that church collapsed. The church board and the minister got in a big fight. The church split up. Two weeks later. That's a true story. I was there. I saw it. Yeah. I need to go back for a second. When you said the minister um, allowed the prophet to pray for her as her husband felt it. Um, so you said she had to get to the root of what spirit told her to go down to the altar. Yeah, that was this one. He was hiding her brain. A mind spirit? Religious demon. Thank you. Hiding. That's how smart they are. They're smarter than we are. And those are the religious demons that are manifesting the mm -hmm. Of course, yes. Kundalini, they're called. Kundalini spirit. Yeah, the center of Kundalini is a place called Bethel in California. That's the epicenter. It used to be here. We used to have the Kundalini. Here was the number one spot. But they beat us. Yeah. So would the holy laughter be the Kundalini? Yeah, it's a Kundalini spirit laughing. Here's how it works. The Holy Spirit blesses you in your inner man, and everything comes out of here if it's God. A Kundalini spirit gives you euphoria and good physical sensations. It feels good. Hoeing feels good. Ho! Oh, oh, ho! Oh. It feels like you're accomplishing something. Snorting, I didn't know felt good. Apparently it does. <laughs> You're manifest. Boy, you got the anointing, girl. Okay. <laughs> it's a sensation difference. See, the Holy Spirit moves spiritually. This is a bodily manifestation. See? It feels good, like euphoria. Oh, wow. 
there's a there's a prophet on YouTube uh, who has uh, taken the top spot in the United States. It used to be a guy named Bob Jones. He used to be the number one guy. He's dead now. But this woman took his spot. She went to heaven and God told her to paint her hair green. She's like my age or older. Okay, old. We're old. Green hair. Okay. I felt God talking to me last week about red hair, but I, uh, I reached for the cat. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, she goes to heaven every week, just like Bob did. Every single week. She got Bob joined. They call them mantles. This is what they call them. Okay, I don't, I don't use that term. There's, there's not a mantle. It's a transfer of demons from this deceived person to that one. And so this woman is now the number one person in the United States. She goes to heaven every week. She sees everything you can imagine up there. There's a big zoo up there, petting zoo for kids. Santa is there, giving out toys to kids. Uh, Jesus and Father were bowling together. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on, okay? And anybody who doesn't have a religious demon immediately goes, wait a minute, that's a check here. I'm, I'm ch bowling? Jehovah is bowling. Really? He's bowling. <laughs> on the face of it, Absolute asinine stupidity on the face of it. No, not when they're around. It all seems real. And they will tell you, you're, you're crazy. I really have green hair. And God told me to wear it. This guy's hair is not green. So I'll take the question. <laughs> what? Oh, that did it. Out. <laughs> like uh, with uh, with like Kenneth Hagin, like he had visions from Jesus, but then like later he got into like the the holy laughter. So like, was that was that no, the Kundalini came in after, like later? They got him later. So like those visits were uh, legit with Jesus. Of course, you know Hagen was a superstar man of God. They they can take anybody. Anybody is even at that level can be taken. The Bible warns you, right? The devil walks around as a... Yeah. yeah you let your guard down. You know, I, I, I got a whole teaching on these poor ministers that have collapsed. And they, they were real powerful men of God. I, go, I got pictures of them. I go down. I gave the biography. Here's what happened to them. A. A. Allen, Hagen, all of them. Or Roberts. You know... You got to remember something, as I've mentioned many times before. Your anointing doesn't have anything to do with your character. See, so let's say you're a monster faith healer, and you get more people healed than anybody in the United States. That doesn't mean you're you have a high character. Hello. So when Jesus said, "You will know them by their fruits," he wasn't talking about the healings. He was talking about your integrity. Uh, there was just a movie that came out with, um, I don't remember the actor's name right now, but anyways, he was a very, very, like, a, a famous priest, and then, um, it's like, they, they said in the movie that, like, basically what you're saying is that the, um, the demons, like, they set up, they try to go after the, the people who are in ministry first, and then they, like, possess them and stuff. Yeah, of course. Wouldn't you if you were a demon? Pardon? Wouldn't you if you were a demon? Uh, yeah, you take the top people down, then the other ones just tumble. Exactly. They go from inside out. Trying to take the right. Churches. Right. Okay, now I want to share something else with you here real quick, okay? <clears throat> Listen, I've had some more turnover here, and some people have left the ministry. Uh, don't even worry about any of that stuff, okay? They're already starting to say negative things 
and blame this person and that one and so on. The other guy I got rid of, he's been trashing me on Zoom. None of that stuff bothers me. If it doesn't bother me, don't let it bother you. Some people are just not supposed to be here. It's no big deal. God has something else for them. There's other ministries. This isn't the only game in town. I'm not the Pope. I'm just a regular person. So if you go somewhere else, you're welcome to do that. And nobody here is going to have a problem with you or, or trash you. Okay? But anyway, this is coming down the pike. Mike did this. Mike said that. The staff did this. Staff did that. Blah, 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 blah. It's just a bunch of drool. Okay? So don't even worry about it. Just laugh it off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just laugh it off. It's a hoax, right? <laughs> All right. Now, when you're ministering to someone, never, ever tell that person to adjust their medications. Never do that. We're going to get sued. You are not a doctor. Okay. Now, this person comes to you. They're so doped up, they can't receive any truth at all. Okay. What I usually do, and I've done it in the past, <clears throat> this person will come to you and they're having side effects that are bad on this medication. They're taking this series and they're getting these side effects that are blocking what we're doing, right? Uh, some people come to you with medications and they're stabilized and they are able to receive truth, okay? Uh, so, you are not to say to the person, listen, you're, you're violating your faith. Step out in faith and stop taking those pills. Because as soon as you do that, the body of the person that's addicted to the pills is going to freak out on you, okay? And the side effects will go from here to here, okay? We are not doctors. We do not tell people to get off or, or adjust their medications, okay? So what I do, I had, I had one guy come for prayer, and I said, uh, what's wrong? Well, I'm having these side effects with this medication. Okay, tell you what we'll do. Um, Give me your doctor's name and phone number. I'll call his assistant, his psychiatrist, and I'll tell him, hey, I'm working with so-and-so. Uh, uh, these medications, the combination, appears to be generating these side effects. Do you think there's anything we could do to either reduce this dosage or switch it with another med so I could get rid of these side effects? Because I'm his counselor and I'm trying to help him. Well. Their attitude was, hey, somebody's trying to help this loser. Let's, let's do it. And so they'll listen to you because you're trying to help them. Okay? Or someone will say, we can't talk to you without the patient with it. That's fine. Sit right here. Boop, 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 boop. Hi, you're talking. Tell me and talk to me. All right. And then I get it straightened out here. So you might be able to get the medication adjusted, reduced, replaced, something like that. But never tell the person to take, stop taking them. We're going to get killed. Well, you don't have any faith, Mike. Listen, faith ends when a personal injury lawyer walks in. <laughs> <laughs> this is not our job. Do not do that. These crazy people that leave here do not take offenses. Yeah. I was thinking, like, I, if I, for anyone, I don't know, if you want to get off your meds and just do it, but don't blame anyone. Take ownership. I don't think that that's right that people are getting blamed because they're just trying to help them, and then it's just like, okay. no. you know, retaliation and stuff. No, do not do that. Okay, do not tell them if you want to get off your medications, get off of them. Do not write, thank you, no. don't go there. Yeah. Okay, so the safe bet is, I'm tired of taking this medication, I'm going to stop. I'll tell you what, why don't you go talk to your doctor, see, and see what he says, or at least talk to his nurse. Now I'm off the hook. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. If I say, well, it's up to you, it's your body. Oh, no, I just bought in to what may be a delusion of this patient. So stay completely out of it. Try and get them to go back to the doctor. Or you call the doctor. Okay, they'll listen to you. They listen to me. 
hey, I'm, I'm the counselor helping your patient, blah, blah, blah. We're having these side effects. Can this get adjusted? Can that get eliminated? What do you think? How could we? And they'll, they'll probably help you. I've had good luck with it. But I never tell them, oh, you're right, brother. Step out in your faith. Give me them pills. Give them to me. <laughs> See that? That's stepping out of your faith. The demons are going, yes. When you're uh, counseling people and praying for them, many of them are living together or they have not repented of adultery. Okay? Never tell anybody to get married or get divorced. Okay, that's not in the Bible. Okay, this might shock some of you with religious demons, but you are not in the Bible commissioned by God to tell these people to get married. That's not in there. Okay, you just tell them truth. Now, here's how it works. Let's say, how come the demons aren't coming out? Well, are you married? Yeah. No, I'm not married. Well, we're kind of married. Oh, you're kind of married. As soon as I hear kind of, then I know to jump in. That's my trigger. Oop. Oh, we're just living together. I said, now listen, it's going to be hard to get these demons out because the Bible says thou shalt not commit adultery. I didn't tell her or him to leave the person, marry the person. I didn't tell them to do nothing. You just share God's word with them and you let the word of God fall where it falls. Are you following me? How long have you been living together? Oh, we've been living together for 10 years. How come you haven't got married? I don't know. He feels uncomfortable, this and that. Though the, I said, okay, well, look. The Bible says this, and so for us to get these spirits and wounds out, it's going to be tough because you're, you're still committing adultery. Okay, so that's something you and the Lord are going to have to work out. See? Whereas pastors go, well, you've been living together 10 years. Just get married. You're living in sin. Just make it legal. Okay, then the, the, then the fool marries the guy or the gal, and all hell breaks loose. The marriage is a nightmare. Doesn't work. See? So now, and you're in the middle of it. Because you said. Then if there's any trouble, they'll say, well, he, he told us to get married. Well, when the other spouse Here's that I told them to get married, and now they're living in a hellish nightmare. Guess who's at fault? Yeah, that's right. Guess who's going to get a call? Guess who's going to have to take more questions? <laughs> <laughs> we do not do these things. Yeah. Would you tell someone that you've given the enemy a legal right to mess with you? Based on the word of God not based on my opinion of whether they should stop living in sin. The Holy Spirit is the one that's convicting them. Then you'll have real repentance. If I browbeat them over their sin, they will eventually rebel. I am not God. I am not assigned by God to convict people of sin. I am to share God's word, and He convicts them of their sin. That's right. And so if I tell them my experience is that if you're doing that, in my experience, we're going to have a tough time getting these demons out because that's adultery. Here's where it says it. Here, Matthew 5. It's right there. So I don't get... See, I'm dumping it on God. Okay. Dump everything you can on God and get Him to be at fault for everything. You get off the hook. But I'm just sharing truth. I didn't create the truth. Then the Holy Ghost's job, that's His job. You want to get delivered from demons? Brother Mike's right. That's what, I, that's what I wrote. It's right there. What are you going to do about it? You're committing adultery. And I wrote that. Brother Mike's just sharing it. You don't, don't shoot the messenger. And then you won't get in trouble. We won't get in trouble. We won't get sued. There's a reason they haven't gotten married, right? And you don't know what it is. You've been living again for 10 years? Hmm, red flags. You have no idea how many people have gotten involved in rotten marriages and married a total gutless stinking loser because you told them to make it right and stop living in sin. You want that on your conscience? A bad marriage on you? Huh? 
Well, I, I'm speaking for you. I'm telling you, you don't. You don't want to get involved in that stuff. We are, we are, not, we are not family planners here. <laughs> well, God said, be fruitful, multiply. Come on, get knocked up, girl. Crank that baby out. I am not, I am not to tell you what to have, who to marry, how many kids to have. That is none of my business. Amen. Don't step into that stuff. You're going to get your hands and feet cut off. I just have a, a question. Maybe like I don't. I'm not trying to like argue it, but maybe you could just make a waiver of some sort that you can't sue us if we give advice. Because that's just ridiculous to me that you're getting retaliated against because you're just, just trying to help them. You know what I mean? Okay. Now we already have a release form. With our interview form, there's two forms. One's the interview form, right? And then they sign a release to come in for prayer and counseling. Remember that? Yeah. Well, Kelly will give you one after the server. <laughs> Stephanie will if you don't have it. So we already have them sign a release form. The form is a full page anyway, okay? If I do what she says, and that's, a good, that's good advice, but if I, if I keep adding good advice on there, I'll have a release form this long. <laughs> And then when you come in for prayer, they're going to look at a release form that long ago. What, is it, what kind of a place is this? <laughs> I mean, would you feel comfortable signing a release form that's six pages just to come in and get prayer? Do it when you go to the doctor. They're going to think, I, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Doctors are nuts. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's good advice, but we've got, I, I tried to cover all the basics on the one page of the form. Okay, <laughs> the lawyers told me to do that years ago. <laughs> this is a strange, strange Bible teachings. <laughs> do you know anybody who would like to manage the healing house? I'd like to find a couple, a married couple if I can, to take over this building. If you ever hear of anything in your travels, would you please send me an email? Uh, it's a pretty easy job. You know, you got to check people in and out. Uh, people come from out of state. They want to come here and get delivered, but they don't have any money for a hotel. So we put them up over there, give them a bed. It's a regular house, you know, kitchen and everything. And they're right next door, so they can come over for the services and so on. But I tried a single female, I tried a single male, uh, I really need the best, the best one was a couple. So we don't have uh, a guy running it with girls there and we don't have a girl there with a bunch of guys coming in from out of town, right? <clears throat> if I had a girl managing the, a woman managing the healing house, I, I wouldn't invite all these people from San Francisco to come. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't put them over there. So if you hear of anybody that is a male or female not living together, because then I don't want to get involved in that. Somebody on the ministry team, you got to get married. I'd like to have a married couple that would take over that ministry with a good heart, lovingly, a people person, somebody who likes people. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, let's uh, go to our last thing and then we'll, we'll close. I gave you a handout here. Now, this relates to this section here, of course. These medications. And we went through the opioid crisis. That was monstrosus. Monstros it was unbelievable. That's over now. Now we're into the next crisis. Benzos. 25 million Americans are on these medications. That's a staggering number. Staggering. These are the main ones. You all know these medications anyway. Valium, Xanax, Halcyon, Clonopin. I mean, all these people are on it. <clears throat> and as you can see, 32% um, of the people who are on these medications are taking them for problems with anxiety. 
Anxiety is a mental illness that's going to sweep the United States like you can't believe. As this thing keeps deteriorating and this keeps falling apart, people are going to be having fears and phobias you're not going to believe. Okay, if you go back to San Francisco and open up a deliverance ministry, they'll be standing at your door, clear down to Encino to get in to get healed if you do that in San Francisco. I mean, unbelievable. And the money will flow in. I mean, big money. Donations coming in left and right. Jimmy, you open to coming up there and doing some teaching? I'm sending you up there, sir. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> As you see these medications now, the reason that we can't tell them to step out in faith and get off the medication is because the side effects from these medications can be outstanding. They're very effective medications. They're very helpful. Okay? Uh, Testimonials up the yin yang about the benefits of these medications, but it's temporary. And then they're getting hooked on them. Okay? So you got somebody with insomnia, severe anxiety, phobias, boom. You take these benzos, it clears up. It's like a miracle drug for two thirds of them. Okay, and again, the devil always creates a problem and then he gives you a solution to it. Okay, I'm giving you anxiety and turning you into a wreck. Hey, I can fix you and I can get you a benzo. And so the devil gives him a benzo and it works. <clears throat> they're much more calm, they're sleeping better, they're not having manic highs and lows. These pills are absolutely, they're incredible. They do work. They do. That's why they're so dangerous. They are working. Okay. But as I mentioned down below there, those are the basically the reasons people take them. Now, a panic attack is a conglomerated event, usually triggered by a demonic thought somebody puts into your mind. Okay. Uh, my wife ran off with the FedEx guy. The thought is received by the human free will. The demons then launch an attack in the soul and the person starts to get anxious, nervous, and scared. My wife ran off with the UPS guy. Then as the mind starts focusing on that, what are they doing? Are they in bed? Are, did they go to Europe? Are, did he buy her stuff? And then these thoughts keep pouring in. What's happening? This gets worse. And the panic gets into the body. And the body starts to react. Sweat, shakes, dry mouth. And then, boom, you're in a full blown panic attack. Everything's firing. This crashed, your faith in God took a dump. This one shot up, your emotions are like, oh my God. Your body is literally vibrating or moving, sweating. You're getting a fog in your brain. You feel like fainting. These demons just launch an all-out attack. And we call them panic attacks. So... Last night, uh, I was praying with a girl up front who was having a panic attack. Her mother left or something like that. And uh, so the the launch, I launched my attack, not against the demons, but against her mind. It's on the tape. Uh, it was near the end of the service. Her mother left her, she was scared to death, she was shaking, she was crying, so on. I could see she was starting to have a full blowner. And God calmed her down and she was giggling at the end. But I hit her mind first here. Okay, now, now listen to me, listen to me now. We're going to pray for your mother and ask God to help her. She's in trouble. So that got her. 
on, on board, on my, bo on my boat. Yeah, I want my mother helped, see? Yeah, I tricked her. And then when, when she came with me, then I s switched over to the Spirit of God, touching her and loving her and turn your life over to Jesus. And I went, built on that. And she, whoop, this all came down and she calmed down and was smiling at the end. And uh, her mother was there, or her grandmother. But who was it? Who was there? Over there. Over here? Was that you? Mm -hmm. That's you? That's her? Yeah, it's that couple right there. Mm -hmm. And her mother, the Holy Ghost jumped on her mother. Are you the mother? Oh, You're the grandmother. The grandma, right? And then she got a blessing. And then I was telling her about grandma getting a blessing. As soon as I saw that, I used that on her. But it's all in the mind. It starts here. There's a trigger of something disastrous, fearful, shocking, deadly, oh my God, something like that. And then demons will steamroll it from there. And then they start manifesting fear. And as you can see, the number one demon Satan's using in America is fear. See that? 80 32% of all benzo users are taking it for anxiety. The other for panic attack, which is anxiety. Right. Correct. See, so you add those two together. What's 32 and 27? 59. 59. 59%, 59% of the people taking benzo, benzos are, have fear demons. That's telling you a lot. It's spreading across the country. And there's no better place to open up a deliverance ministry than San Francisco. San Francisco. <laughs> a deliverance minister's dream. These guys have hit the lottery. <laughs> the response you get in San Francisco, 10 times what we get here. We struggle here. The devil's got us buried over here. San Francisco, he couldn't even stop it. I mean, lining up to, from Disneyland to San Francisco to get into your office to get help. It'd be enormous, enormous results in San Francisco. I mean, it would grow up there without even doing anything. Practically, word of mouth would bring in multitudes. Get people to come here, I have to take a weapon over to their house. <laughs> San Francisco, they would be barging in the door to get a touch of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The great Mario Murillo is up near there. His tents are gilded. He's near San Francisco, isn't he? Oakland or something like that. Mario Murillo. Probably the greatest preacher in the country. They flood in. You ever been in San Francisco? As soon as you cross that bridge and go over to that, you can feel the demons. It's darkness. You can't believe. Much worse than here. Well, I got to drag people here. Not there. Guys, they'll just come right to you. They'll flood in. And they'll bring the money. You will not have a financial problem at all. You'll get place to minister. You'll get a building. Whatever you need, the money will come in for it. Yeah. Like, how do you make sure, like, um, like you pray, for, like, deliverance for them, but then they don't just, like, go back and start doing, like, fed all or like they go back on the street and Well, the, the probability is they are. But uh, the way the gospel always works, as you know, and I'll close with this then. <clears throat> no matter what you do, let's say it's salvation. You're going to preach to this many people here, but only this amount here are going to stick. This amount here will respond. 
I want to get saved. Hallelujah. But six months later, this is the only thing left. Okay. Then you go to the same thing with, you know, what we're doing. You know, you try and get deliverance out, but only this amount here actually goes through with it and finishes their deliverance. Right? In the parable of the sower, only one ground was good ground. That's right. Uh, it, Jesus said, the gate to hell is this wide, but the gate to heaven and the door is only that wide. That's what he said. This is not my opinion. This is what God said. See? So if you're in uh, Billy Graham, Luis Palau, all these guys, they get all these salvations, but they only end up with virtually nothing. Uh, if you get a bunch of Christians saved, uh, very few of them will ever become disciples. The tiny group is the disciples. There's a bunch of Christians. They're, they're a dime a dozen. A disciple, rare as hen's teeth. As Grandpa used to say. I didn't say that. Okay? This door to heaven is very small. So let's say there's uh, now 8 billion people on the planet, you know, 8 billion. Most of them will be lost. What about the revival? This is a revival. We don't have that now. Well, I'm for the word of faith. I believe God's going to send a revival, save everybody. Okay. Why don't we get that religious demon out of your head, and then you come back and talk to me? Because the Bible already said, I don't need to hear your demon tell me about revivals. I know about revival. Of all the people who start their deliverance, we, we have them come in all the time. Get a whole bunch of demons out. Those are the ones that finish it. Small group. Most of them don't finish it. Do these medications cause demonic compression, like the Xanax and the Kalamakin? Well, no, that depends on the person. Um, and what you're looking for from the medications. You know, if you're trying to take these pills and try to live a, a life, you know, they're probably probably beneficial for a while. Uh, if you have someone who wants deliverance and who's a certified psycho, I tell them, hey, go back to your doctor and get on some medications and let's reboot this and try and get your personality to level out so you can receive some truth. And then we'll work on later cutting down on your meds or switching meds or something like that. See, If I get this hit, hit me, I try to go that way. If they hit me from this way, I try to go that way. So. Everybody reacts to these medications differently because everybody's body's different. So you have to minister to them by getting the personal information from them, finding out how they're responding to what they're taking. If they're abusing it. Or if they're abusing it, or how long they've taken it. All that's, all that's a factor. So medication can help you get them delivered, or it can block the deliverance, depending on the case. <clears throat> So my mom is uh, 90 years 
call it that. Mm-hmm. I was, my mom just did that to survive. What she she still has her mind. She still, she can tell you things, and she loves the Lord. And I look at it, and I'm like, my mom suffered. But she was on these medication. Right. She still has her mind. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, Mike. I'd love for you to talk to her Well, sometimes God performs miracles in the worst of circumstances. Don't yeah. ever don't ever put that past him. Yeah. Okay, I'm just speaking in general terms here. Yeah, but what it, my example is that yes, and I think my mom has a very, very strong will. So that the will in a person is what I see. Because there's a bunch of people in my family with strong wills. She was determined. She was going to survive. She was going to do the best for her family that she could, even in that bad circumstance. And she's now 90, still taking Xanax. She doesn't take it, you know, popping it all the time. She takes it when she's having a bad day. Right. She still lives in a situation with my brother who's schizophrenic. Um, so... I look at that and I go, I understand we shouldn't be on these drugs, but the example is like she was asking, will it take them out? My mom is 90. It, like what God did in her life, yes. even in that circumstance, is amazing to me. Yeah. He took me off of all that medication. I yeah. started out there. He took me off of it. Yeah. But for her, I'm amazed. Well, what I can do in different situations, so we can't like cookie cutter. Well, you can't do this because of that, and that's that religious stuff. Yeah, exactly. Now, what she just said uh, was exactly what I said, or she worded it differently. Yeah. She got off. She was different from her mother. Two patients, so to speak. Yeah. And her mother took whatever and reacted however, and she took whatever and reacted. However, so you as a minister have to look at her and her mom and analyze both of them separately to see what they're taking and how it's reacting to them. But you don't tell them to step on on your faith and stop taking your medications. Okay, we medication something about have to do with sobriety. So yes, exactly. Yeah, of course. If it's fear, alcoholics are uh, take these. Yes. So my thing is like, okay, this fear that's got them in this situation, these medications, they are actually like alcohol. They make you not sober, right? So the fear right. doesn't bother you. Yes. Yeah. But then the Bible says be sober. Right. So the, the situation that has to be healed is the fear yes. of the person. So my question also that if you deliver them from that fear, are they going to continue needing to use the Xanax and the Columbus? No, no, but... Uh, my point was, you don't tell them right. to take off the Medicaid. You don't do it. Right. That was my point. Yeah. They can taper off it as they're going through deliverance. They're getting better. They're improving. I got an email this morning from a gal. Said the exact same thing. What I'm telling you, she's getting better. This is improving. That's improving. Okay. You can taper off without triggering a, an addiction response from the body where the person goes crazy. Now you've got a big mess on your plate. You know, knowledge is not good enough in ministry. You have to have wisdom. Wisdom is the key, not knowledge. Knowledge is important, which is what I've been trying to do. I'm going to try and share a little knowledge. But wisdom on how to use knowledge is the number one thing. So, like she said, you can't cookie cutter anything, particularly in the spirit world. The demons do that. They tailor make everything for each individual person. They don't treat you the same the way they do her. No way. You get your own plate. The crap you get is not the crap he gets. But it's all crap. <laughs> Uh, I'll teach you for asking questions. <laughs> All right, now um, please pray for me this week that I don't have to take a lot of questions next Friday. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Any last questions as we close? <laughs> All right.
Okay, and let's close in prayer then. Thanks, Lord. Uh, what a great uh, class today. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry about last night. I already apologized for it. But some people may want some prayer before they leave today. And if they do, the ministry team is going to come down and help me. And you're going to bless them. Because we can't heal people or bless people or fix people. I don't have any... I don't have any miracle working powers of any kind. I'm just looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You have all the miracles. You've got all the love. I don't have anything. Therefore, I'm not going to use any of me. I'm going to use you. You are the healer and the deliverer. And I pray, Lord... I pray, Lord, that you'll fix that seminar for me and bless those people. And I pray, Lord, you will heal today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if you need any special prayer, come on down here. My ministry team will be here to help you. We'll all help you. If not, you're free to go. Thank you for coming today. I'm here every month, the fourth Saturday of every month. Have a teaching class at noon right here and I have a podcast Sunday morning at 9 o'clock I hope you'll join me it's on twitch.tv you just put in HCC ADC and uh, Anne has a weekly zoom meeting in California she's from Carlsbad if you'd like information about that Zoom meeting for women, that would be great. Uh, I think it's on Tuesdays, I'm not sure. Uh, Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. What did she say? Saturdays. Saturdays at 6.30. It just came to me, gift of knowledge. Uh, <laughs> 6.30 on Saturday is uh, that Zoom for women in Carlsbad. You don't have to be there. I mean, you get on the Zoom. See Anne if you want some information about it. Tuesday nights, we have another Zoom healing service with Julie and the Hardcore Ministry team. Uh, some women around here are hardcore prayer people, and they have the anointing. They will drive a rack of demons out of you quickly. Tuesday nights at 6.30 Pacific time. Okay? Uh, on Instagram, it says 6, 6.30 Mountain Time. It, it should have been Pacific Time. 6, 6.30 Pacific Time. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. All right. You're dismissed. Or you can come down for prayer, whichever you like. Okay. Did any of this help you? Yes. Are you going to repent now? Yes, I will repent tonight. Yeah. Yes. You're not going to receive anything from anybody. Yes. Okay. Nothing. No. Yes. If you receive any message from God, you're going yes. to reject it. I've been deceived because you've been deceived. Yes. Okay, and you're going to stop I, that. Like, oh, really good stuff, and I was confused. You were confused. Yes, I was confused. Right. I was God. And that's what I, demons do, right? The real feeling that I, that's, I, I start having the real feeling that you know, and then I start you had a weird feeling. No. Okay. <clears throat> now, and I've been free for a while to, you know, to ask to see what's the truth about this thing that's coming. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. Now, I told you what the truth was. Now, <clears throat> now, this woman right here, she's got a good heart. She's a lovely person. She has, she's like the person I talked about earlier. For years, the demons were talking to her. Then they flipped on her and they started giving her good things about God. And then she kept listening to them. And if you keep listening to demons say good things, your life's going to end up bad. So I'm trying to get her to stop listening to anything from the spirit world. Because if you are a person that has been listening to demons for a long period of time, God will not talk to you anymore because he knows if he says a word, they will mimic it. 
if he says something positive, they will mimic it. I love you. Hey, God just told her he loves her. Let's try it. We love you. And the person doesn't know the difference because they're spiritually ignorant. You see that? So you have to get them to stop listening to everything. And if they won't, you've got to let them go. Because they're never going to get healed. If she doesn't repent, she will never be healed. I how do I got that no. from my mother? Okay, hold on. No, hold on a second. She, she just said, I repent. Okay, repentance means to stop doing it. Matano eo is a Greek word. It means to turn around and go back the other direction. Okay, so when a spirit comes to her tonight, they'll come tonight because they heard me tell her this today. So they're going to come tonight. And as soon as they do, as soon as they do, she's at the crossroads. Shall I listen? If she listens, she's dead in the water. If she makes them pay, they'll stop it. What do demons hate? Praise. If I say something to you and you have to listen to praise, they'll stop it. <clears throat> but if they don't have to pay for anything, they just keep coming back. Wouldn't you? Doesn't everybody? I mean, if you're going to come and get something you don't have to pay a price for, you just keep coming back and getting it. That's what demons do. But if they got to start paying, they'll stop. But she doesn't make them pay. She welcomes them. Here's the welcome mat. And she said she's going to repent. Did you hear her? Did you hear her say that? Yeah. Okay, he heard you. I said, but I deceived. No. What did you say? I was deceived. You're not anymore. Not anymore. No, you're not deceived anymore. I thought it was, you know, when they came, they said it was Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't care if they said uh, pumpkins are green. It doesn't matter. You are not to listen to them. Okay, you said you repented, and he heard you. He heard you. That means you're going to stop it. Yes. Repentance yes. means to stop it. Yes. Yeah, right? Now, what do you need to repent of? Um, performance, just trying to do things to look a certain way, like performance. Okay, now, yeah. performance is usually related to anxiety. Eh? What will people think of me? Oh. Okay. You with me? Yeah. What is that? Uh, rejection, fear. Rejection of fear. So when he says to me, I've got this performance thing, what do I do? Well, I'm not praying for performance. I'm going to the root of it, which is rejection. I, <laughs> See that? If somebody comes to you and says, oh my God, my shoulder is killing me. It's hurting for six months. That means nothing. What's the root of it? Unforgiveness. What's the root of it? You, and you, you figure it out. Her root's easy to figure out. She listens to people, individuals Wait, in the spirit. Pain is unforgiveness? Hmm? Pain is unforgiveness? It can be. Not in every incident. It could be trauma, but you've got to figure it out. That's what my point is. You've got to figure it out. I figured her out. Yeah. She listens to them tell her good things. Jesus said, no, I don't want you to say one word to me, good, bad, or indifferent. You're out. And she needs to be like Jesus. Right? Yeah. Now, this gal here, look at her. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. She's got demons in her brain. And what do they do to her? They cause her mind to race. Yeah. She thinks about a lot of thoughts at once. <laughs> and then she talks like that too. Okay. See that? She's like a Harley that somebody left the throttle up while it's parked. 
And she asks questions like that too. Notice that? You and me? These are brain demons. They're causing her mind to accelerate. They accelerate. And she talks like that. And she looks like that. When she talks, she goes. <clears throat> see, her body is flowing with the spirits. Did you see her over there? Very vivid talker. You ever met anybody like that? Well, I thought this was that, and that was this. And then God showed. See that? Their body starts to mimic how their mind is racing. See? It probably happens at night. She lays down, I'm tired, I'm going to bed, her body's pooped. She lays down, brrr, something starts running. Is this making sense? Does this make sense to you? That happens, yep, that's right. Yeah. Okay, now, if you have a good heart and you are a born-again Christian, you have the Holy Spirit, that does not stop this. Do you notice that? Right, yeah. The Spirit has to be removed. In order to remove the spirit, they have to know it's in there. Because God's people perish for lack of knowledge. See? So when you get your ministry going up there, you have to diagnose this kind of a person, like I just did. Did you see me? I'm doing this because you're here. I don't normally do this. You guys are going to be booming in San Francisco. Miracles, healing, whole, whole deal. I should have got an amen on that. Can I get... Amen. Can you get <laughs> oh, you're here. Yeah. I didn't know you were here. Surprise. I'm bringing you in the front. Okay? So she has to know it's in there, and she has to recognize what they're doing to her. Just a minute ago, did you hear what she just said? Yeah, that's in there. They're there. That's there. She said it four times. Did you notice that? That's them. See, now they're listening to me talk to her right now, and they're telling her I'm criticizing her. And so they're going to try and hit her with embarrassment right now as I'm talking to you. Right? Yeah. yeah. I just know you're exactly because I used to repeat myself like 50 times. She, now, did you hear what she said? She said, I used to repeat myself. That's not her, that's him doing it. He's doing that, and she's just expressing him. I used to repeat myself. No, he's doing it. He wants her to appear like an idiot to her world. So he gets her to over-talk, over-dramatize, and overstate things. See that? So that other people will think she's a kook. She's not a kook. She's a very intelligent person. She's got a good, loving heart. Everything about her is like positive, but they're making her appear to be stupid. <clears throat> you see that? You see that? Yeah. What time is it? Is a normal person. You got the time? What time is it? You have a watch? Is it his watch? What time? Have you looked lately? See there? Now I'm manifesting demons. I'm repetitively blowing out what time is it? And so people that hang around me are going to start going, I don't want to be around Mike because Mike acts like an idiot and he talks like a busted chainsaw. <laughs> you see that? So people are going to start rebelling and getting away from me. And I'm really, I could be a totally different person, loving, kind, wanting to help. It doesn't matter. It's what you appear to people. You'll see this in San Francisco. Miles of them are exactly like this. These are anxiety, fear spirits. They just, um, <clears throat> you know what they remind me of? <clears throat> a refrigerator motor. A refrigerator motor runs, and you don't even know it's running. And somebody new that comes in and says, what's that noise? What noise? Oh, yeah, that's the refrigerator. She's so used to these demons running her mind at a million miles an hour, asking repetitive questions, re making repeated thoughts and statements. She doesn't even notice it, and once in a while she catches it. But she doesn't know what to do about it. 
Did you see her right now? Yeah. She just took a breath. She just did it. Did you see it? That's him. He's getting scared. I just exposed him in public. I told all of you what he was doing to her. He doesn't like that. So she went. <sighs> oh, now she's looking around like that. Like, uh-oh. That's him. See that? So how does she Now, all separating? we got to do is get, well, she's separating it right now. I just explained to her what it was. She said, yeah, you're right. I kind of do that. So now she's kind of getting it. So <clears throat> you got to get the person to recognize what's wrong with them, what the spirits are doing, and then get them to turn on them, yes. not themselves. There's nothing wrong with her. Father doesn't see anything wrong with her. He <laughs> likes her. He loves her. He sees them. And he wants her to see them and turn on them. See that? It's not the person. It's them. And so that's when you teach him self-deliverance. Right? And then she turns on that spirit in her brain. How did it get in there? I don't know. I haven't gotten enough information. But anyway, I know it's there because I see it manifesting. I saw it last night in the seminar. She's asking like 50 questions at once and I couldn't keep up with her. I knew that wasn't her. I knew it was demons taking advantage of my stupidity. I opened it up to questions. They said, oh, you want questions, huh? We got a gal over here going to ask you questions. And kaboom. There it goes. I got questions. I wasn't crying. Oops. That's them. And if we can't get them to turn on them, we cannot get them out. Because free will is the determining factor in God's blessings. You have to believe they're there and then believe they're for you. And if you don't, you don't get them. Any blessing, healing, finances, deliverance, hey, you're not getting nothing unless you believe God's word. He said they're for you. They're yours. Come get them. And when you come get them, that's faith. And boom, it happens. Right? Amen. You follow me? All right. Was I criticizing you? Mm -mm. Of course I wasn't. Yeah, I love you. Hold that with you. All right. Now Stephanie's going to close your eyes and take a breath. Go ahead. All right. Now. That thing has been in there for years, yeah. correct? Yeah. When is this going to stop? Now. Now. Yeah. Hear that? That's kind of the response you're looking for in San Francisco. It's going to stop now. That's what we're looking for. So you just get them to relax, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. His wife's sitting behind him, and she's already exhausted with pain, and she's already crying. No, I'm sorry. I'm just, okay. just like she loves him and cares about him, and she lives in pain because his demons keep beating on her. Right. His demons keep beating on her. And go get her, will you? Get that one. Tell her come Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I'm so sorry for what I have done. I have hurt myself and my wife. I have had one argument after the other, one heartbreak after the other. And these spirits are controlling me and ruining my marriage. They want to wreck my finances, steal my job, and break my wife's heart. There it is. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's going on with you? Sickness, uh, my throat, and my, my stomach. And I'm not really sure where it's coming from. When did that start? Uh, when I was doing drugs and drinking a lot and taking uh, MDMA. Take a what? MDMA. Okay, now, uh, what age was that? 
twenties. Uh, twenties, early early twenties. Twenties. Okay. Now listen to this. <clears throat> You'll get a thousand of these guys a day coming in. Okay. It's never what he said. That's not the problem. It's never the alcohol or the drugs. It's never the alcohol or the drugs. So you go back further. See. Now, did somebody somebody abuse you or hurt you when you were little? My brother did. What, did was he beating on you or what? Yeah, he was. He would punch me, push my arm, and he would like try to cover me with a blanket so I would like could breathe and yeah. he would always uh, just you know talk me down and just insult me. And, and then where's your brother now? He's not here. He's in, he's in Alabama. Alabama. How do you get along with him now? Not at all. I mean, well, there was one time where God kind of reconciliated something. When was that? Uh, past last last year. Yeah. And then what happened? We had a six-hour, seven-hour conversation, and uh, yeah, it was really powerful. And then what's going on now? <laughs> okay. Yeah. See that? Yeah. See that? So while he was getting bullied by his brother, you know, the, these spirits of rejection got in. And that's normal in families. <clears throat> the dominant sibling uh, is either jealous or tries to assert their authority over the younger one. And they do it in different ways. Could be verbal, could be physical, could be all kinds of things. But when they do that, the spirits get into the younger one and they grow up kind of with low self-esteem, low self-concept, I'm, I'm, I'm a doormat, I'm secondary, my parents saw it happening and didn't protect me. So then that kind of abandonment thing gets in, see? And so the way to get that to go away, and it goes away, is... But then it comes back. And then drink again, then it comes back. And so the demons get the person to keep self-medicating so he can pick up more. So it starts out with the brother, and then the demons start stacking. That's what's wrong with it. It's not, it's not the drugs. That's only a symptom. Don't go for the drugs or the alcohol. Right? That's a symptom of the problem. The problem was the brother. That's how they got in. Did also my, my dad as well. You know, my dad had a really bad relationship, and uh, we would always clash and, and butt heads. He kicked me out of the house, tried to get me arrested, and things like that. Rejection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They double teamed him. Got the brother to beat on him, the dad beat on him. So easy to see. But most ministers, they're ignorant, so they just say, well, oh, you're taking drugs. Lord God, we command these drugs. <laughs> it's not going to work because he stayed in there, the brother, the dad. So the next step then is after you figure out what it is, which we just did, then we got to make sure he doesn't have any unforgiveness or ought against either of them. My dad, he passed away. Uh, I believe that I have forgiven him. Do you have any ought against him? A negative, negative sense about him. No. Okay, how about the brother? I don't believe that I did after I apologized to him that day. Uh, What'd you apologize for? Uh, I was, I'm like, my mom and I, I was telling my mom about scripture because she was living, living like a lukewarm Christian lifestyle, but I was overdoing it. She got upset. She told my brother, and my brother started talking to me, and then I started yelling at him. And, uh, yeah, I just, in my mind, I was like, that wasn't very Christian like. So I came back and apologized. And just told him that I loved him. Okay, now, did you hear that? That was great. The demons used triggers to get him to manifest, and he got mad. And then his conscience told him to go back and apologize. So now we know they're in there.
because they triggered him to take an offense. See how you can you can see the symptoms and you know the root of it. Sorry, dad and brother. So if he's forgiven them, then he has the authority and the love of God already there. It's all there. Spirit man, this guy's set to be delivered. If he's forgiven him and doesn't have any ought to his brother, it's all good. I don't care. He's ready to go. Then you go take them through deliverance, but not when they just come to you and say, hey, I'm on drugs. Oh, okay, drugs come out. They're not going to come out. They might throw a few out for you, but the rest of them took a deep dive and they're hiding. So don't even waste the time? They, don't even waste the time? Like if they just don't do it. I, I don't do it at all. No, I go for the root. The root of the problem. What's yours? From? Right here. My mother and my father. So I, I'm struggling with a lot of sexual sex. And, uh, okay, now stop right there. <clears throat> this guy uh, has got lust problems and he committed adultery that's not the problem drugs no adultery lot no go somebody uh, trashed him when he was younger who who hurt you I was drugged. Huh? I was drugged. At what age? Nine. Drugged by? Drugged by, I believe, my, my first my, uh, baseball coach. What did he do to you? I have just a, an image. When I first got saved, there's this image in my mind where I'm, it's hard for me to see. I'm, I'm an either intoxicated or drug. And there's a younger girl coming towards me in blonde. And it was later revealed that the general manager of the movie was doing child pornography with his daughter. Okay. Now, this is an easy one, right? The lust demon and transferred from the coach wow. right in there he drugged him then he fondled him the demon went from the coach to here now he's got lust problems and he failed God so the demons told him you're a rotten Christian and you stink and he starts to feel negative about himself because he failed when the whole thing was caused by them they sent that coach to him to drug him and molest him see that the transfer. Your brother transfer. Coach transfer. See that? Is it? I got a lust problem. No, you don't. No, we got a coach problem. He doesn't have a lust problem. He doesn't want to lust. Do you? No. He, see? It's not him. It's them. They targeted the kid, nine years old. They put a bullseye on his back in the spirit world, and that pervert came over and got him. See that? They'll hunt you down. That's how you do it. Get to the root of it, not what they say. Okay. What they say is valid, but they just got it jacked up. The order of it's jacked.
Okay. Is there anything you need to repent of? I've repented of. I've repented of. No, anything else? Um, you need to repent of. You haven't repented of. Nothing that I can Good? Yeah, nothing that I can Okay, these guys are good to go. I mean, they're, they're, they're ready. We know what the problem is. We know what the demons are. They have the love of God and the anointing. They already have it. He wouldn't have come down here if he didn't have it. People don't come down for help that don't have the Holy Ghost. They run out the door. Ministry, San Francisco. He stinks ahead. See, so just get him to relax, right? Uh, yeah, good. There you go. You just get him to relax. I try to get him to relax a little, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Thank you, Lord. Father, I ask you to forgive me for my sins and my failures. I nail these things on the cross of Calvary. I thank you that you, your love for me is unconditional. I have the anointing. I have the Holy Ghost and I have the desire and the motivation to rid myself of Satan and my pervert coach and my brother and my dad. All their demons will bow in the name of Jesus. And I command these filthy demons to come out of me by the blood that Jesus shed, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' mighty name. All right, now just take a breath and blow. Breathe out of your mouth. Breathe out of your mouth. And use your mind and scream at them while you're thinking. Come out now. Out of my soul. Out now. Out of my stomach. Out of my mind. Out of my throat. Come out. Go. Come out. Out of Jesus' name. Out of Jesus' name. I keep his brother. Come out. All of you. Come out. All right. Come out right now. Go. Come out. 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 All the way out. Come out. You stinking spirit of lust. You pervert. I bind your power. You come out of the man of God. All the way out. You pervert. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. You stinking pervert. Come out of that body right now. All the way out. All that You drug demon. Come out of that body. There he is. Come out right now. Come out of his stomach. Come out of his stomach. Come out of that body right now. There he is. You demon of fear. Fear of being drugged. Fear of being raped. Fear of taking drugs, fear of, drugs. fear of drinking, Pray come out in Jesus, Jesus' holy name. Right come out. Come on, everybody, right now. Come out there. Come on, everybody. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Satan, I command you to come out of me. Lust demon, I command you to come out of me. Every demon from that coach. Come out of my body right now. Every spirit, come out. There he is. Come on. God, there he is. Right there. Kick you up. Keep coughing. There he comes. There he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Out of me right now. Come out, buddy, right now. You tell these lust demons to come out right now. Come out in Jesus. Say it. Say it. Come out, buddy, right now. Go, Satan. Go. Evil, come out. Evil. Evil, come out. Evil, come out. Come out there. Listen, you're going to have to let this guy go. He's what we call a repeat offender. He's wearing you down. He's trying to bury you alive. He tries and he wants to do it, but he won't put in the real work to do it. Well, let's let him. Let's let him go. Dear Jesus, my husband has to go to you. I gotta let him go. Year after year, I get weaker and more tired and more hurt. I want all my husband's spirits out of me right now. Come out of there. Come out there. All the grief and sadness go. 
Help. Come out right now. All the regrets. Regrets of marrying him. Regrets of taking him back. Regrets of trying over and over again. All the discouragement. All the sadness. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Thank you. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Come on. I want my husband gone now. I'm giving him to Jesus. I can't heal him or fix him or help him. I'm helpless. Lord Jesus, he's yours. Spirit, come out of me. Come out of me right now. Come out of me right now. Come out. All the way. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Come out. Come out of there, Satan. Satan, I curse your name. I command you. I command you. I curse your name. Humiliation, embarrassment, shame, failure. Get out of my body now in the name of the Lord. Failure. Losing. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of there. Come out of that body. Get out of that body right now, I said. Come out, Satan. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Every demon, come out. Say that. Every spirit, come out. Come out, you devil. Come. Keep coughing. There it is. Keep coughing. Good girl. Good girl. All that performance, come out right now in Jesus' name. Shake it a cup, 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 shake it a Come out of here, you warlock. You warlock of drugs. I command you. You witchcraft of drugs. I command you. I command you to bow. I command you to fail. I command you to lose my body. Every addiction, every urge, every desire, every trigger. I renounce you and I curse you. I command you to fail. Fail. Fail in Jesus' mighty name. Fail. Come out. Come out of there. Come out, you rotten devil. He's got rejection demons. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Say it. Come out of there, you rotten devil. Go! Now go! Come out quicker, you rotten, sinking bully. Come out of there, you pervert. You pervert. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Go! Go! There it is. Come on. The demons are flying out of him right now. Yeah, her too. Sweetheart, but your husband's getting delivered. Come on, fight harder. Stop holding back. Stop. I'm not listening to anything anymore. I'm not listening to anything anymore. Come out of me. Stop telling me stories. Stop sending me YouTube kooks. Come out of there. I said I hate you. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? What are you, deaf? I said, you spirit, I hate you. I hate you. No more. No more. No more. No more. Get out of there. Get out of there. 
Get out of there, Bonnie. Stop doing that. Hurry up. You got the anointing. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Get out of my body right now. I'm sick of listening to you. Stop sending me fantasy crap. Stop sending me religious fantasies. Get out of here. Get out of my body. Get out. Did you repent? I, I, need, I need more help on my mind. I, have, no. I hear voices. No. I hear stop. Voices. Stop. Stop. What are you going to do when you hear a voice? What are you going to do when you hear a voice? <laughs> I have to reject the voice. No, you're going to make them pay. I just went over it. Yes. You got to make them pay. But right now you got the anointing. No. 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 Stop. You got the anointing right now and they're coming out. They're telling you to keep talking. You're sorry for yourself. It's not me. It's you. You keep talking. You're blocking your own deliverance. There you go. Good girl. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. 30 straight minutes. No talking. Satan, come out of me right now. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold of me. Get out. Get out, girl. God bless you. What a day. I know. I'm so busy helping other people. Um, kind of disciple him a little bit. Right. Hi, pretty. Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at that. This is Noah. 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 Really good baby. Noah the prophet. Yeah, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> but boy. A lot of it is well, beautiful. Thank you. Bye. So when they come, they have to sign right. like a. You doing out here? Yeah. Get back in there. Yeah. <laughs> You did <laughs> You just told me no. I told you to get back in there and get them demons out of that guy. You got the anointing. He's not done. He's got a legion of demons. Who cares? Oh, come on. All right, that's round one. From this day forward, you'll never take another drug, ever. When you're 80 years old and you die, you will not have had another drug because of today. <laughs> now get out of there. You're tired. You have the anointing. You're not tired. The anointing breaks the yoke and lifts the heavy burdens. The anointing doesn't get tired. Demons get tired. So he'll relax for three more minutes, take a breath. I'm going. You get out of there right now, Satan. You're not going to get me to quit this time. No excuses. Satan, lose your hold of me. Satan, lose your hold of me, I said. Come out. There it goes. Come out. Keep him going. Come out of there. Drugs and alcohol. Fear. Get out of the body. Hurry up. Get out of the body right now. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold of me. Satan, lose your hold of me. How'd that go? Yeah, I'm good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, okay. Let's give him a second. How'd that go? Do it well, but wow. still like. And now he's not done. See, so I asked him a question. See that? All right. Now, uh, did you used to be a, a an adulterer with a lot of chicks? 
No, uh, watched a lot of pornography. You did? Did you watch a lot of porn, oral sex porn? Oral sex porn? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The demons get in there, they get in here and they get in here. Oral sex porn. And then they give them throat cancer. That's what they do, that's their job. Do you want that? They come right off the computer. He's got to go out. Now. Go ahead and repent for porn and oral sex. Go ahead. Anal sex on porn? Anal sex? Anal sex and porn, Lord God. All Cancer? Cancer, I repent of that, Lord God, right now. I Cancer. confess it to you, Father God, I give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. They come down with it. They watch it on porn. Oral, anal sex, cancer, uterine cancer, all that stuff up there. Porn. Yep. They got in his throat. They're not staying there. They're not staying there. <laughs> Just like he got rid of the bully demons, that guy's coming out too. Right? <laughs> there we go. And you're going to help him. All ready? Satan, in the name of Jesus, you oral sex pervert! You come out of that throat. In Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there. Right now. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of my throat. Come out of my throat. Quickly. Come out right now. Poison from porn. Poison from porn. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come out, Satan. Come out of that body right now. Say it. Come out of there. Quickly.